Greetings, friends. Uh, it's me, Wayman, again. Uh, sorry to bug you with all this, but uh, my colleague across the aisle has another video uh, he posted in a series, so I'm just going to dispel some of the notions that he seems to have about atheism. In his second video, Why I'm Not an Atheist 2, Outstanding Examples, he gives a romanticized view of Christianity. And Noel Friedman, David Noel Friedman, uh, one of my favorite uh, Bible scholars, had this to say about it. Historical reality is always more complex and fascinating than the orthodox of any tradition would like us believe. The winners rewrite history, and the rewrite is almost always a simplification. Simplifications are helpful to give us an initial grasp, but we should never content ourselves with them. David Noel Freeman, What Are the Dead Sea Scrolls and Why They Matter, page 69. So that's what the user here is doing, and I find it interesting. And just like in mythology, Perseus snuck up on Medusa, didn't dare to look at her because he would turn the stone, use the reflection to find her, and lobbed off her head. He didn't throw away the head, friends. He kept it, and he took it back. And in the end, uh, he used it. And so we will use the head of history uh, to dispel some of these claims that my colleague across the aisle makes. I'm an agnostic. I could care less. But I hate and dislike when things are somewhat misrepresented, and uh, that's the case here. His main idea, after he lists some examples of pious Christians and discusses the start of hospitals, which is, you know, uh, Egyptians practice medicine. Uh, also, uh, you had great people giving up their lives for groups uh, that were not Christians. Moses, Lycurgus, Sparta, Solon of Athens, uh, these huge, huge people, uh, Hammurabi and the law code of Hammurabi, uh, creating uh, civilization out of chaos and implementing uh, a form, even though they're rough forms, maybe, to start, uh, forms of justice. And there's a text uh, out of the... Uh, Old Testament literature, uh, speaking of justice, uh, Deuteronomy 33, 21, and he provided the first part for himself because there, in a portion of the lawgiver, was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people, and he executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. So these people, whether they were Jewish or Greek, uh, many people in society gave up their lives, uh, like Hergus starved himself outside the city when he felt he was no longer useful, gave up his life for the culture and the civilization and the city-state. Beautiful. So, he makes some claims here on his blog. Atheism doesn't demand anything of its adherence. It's an easy philosophy the easiest philosophy, Christian demands of those who, who would give the highest callings that they are to sell all their possessions, give the earnings to the poor, and follow the footsteps of Christ. Uh, that's just wrong. Uh, atheism does that also because we have the potential uh, to follow virtue. And we already talked about that in the last video. We are indebted to each other for ourselves and for each other for our, uh, uh, to preserve ourselves and, and our culture and our identities and who we are within a group. And another claim that this user makes is uh, another, uh, from another atheistic uh, perspective, uh, Mother Teresa is, to be blunt, either a moron or a best a lunatic. According to modern atheism, we would only have one life to live and after this life we die or cease to exist. Our conscious is extinguished and our bodies placed into the ground where we decay and eat insects. That's the end of the story. There's no afterlife, no resurrection, no hope for eternity. For someone like Mother Teresa to waste half her life living in squalor in a ghetto 
is risking her own health by surrounding herself every day with the sick and dying people is, from the perspective of modern atheists, ridiculous. Uh, that's false. Uh, we have Doctors Without Borders out there helping people, and he claims, the fuser in the essay, that atheism has no person like Mother Teresa, and we do, uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates dumps, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation dumps millions into research, improving the lives of people, uh, funding schools, computer systems, fighting diseases, AIDS research, all kinds of stuff. And that seems to be overlooked. So, who in this situation would be for the higher cause? Living for the selfish desires of heaven or doing good for the sake of doing good through virtue? So, just something to think about. And don't worry, friends. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing and try to follow the highest form of virtue and encourage others to do so. Remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.